transformation. I believe that God might use that church someday in a, in a bigger way, maybe, possibly. So he's in the very beginning stages of help launch that church and get it off and stuff. And, and so uh, I'm teasing. Chad's over there on staff with him, him and Heather. And so, hey, it's good to see you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. You guys are always family. Can somebody shout amen? amen. Well, praise God. Hi, show of hands. How many parents do we have here this morning? Will you raise your hand? How many parents do we have? Wow. That's a room full of parents right there. Maybe we should just stop and pray real quick. <laughs> Can somebody at least say amen to that? How many times have your kids uttered these words to you? But you promised. You promised. Just this week I was talking to Jax and he reminded me of something. He said, hey, Daddy, uh, you told us that we could get a, a blow-up water slide. And I said, okay. But I said, buddy, it, it's not summertime yet. I said, when it's summertime comes, you know, maybe we'll talk about it. We'll talk to your mom and everything. And you know what he said to me? He said, Daddy, you promised. How many know our children are very good at reminding us when we promise them things? Don't get quiet on me now. How many know we can learn something from our kids? And we should be reminding our Heavenly Father about His promises. Whew, can I preach what the Lord gave me this morning? Are you guys going to be quiet or somebody going to be ready to shout? Four of us. I'll preach it anyway. Most of us are good at telling God about our problems. But the Bible tells us to put the Lord in remembrance of his promises, not our problems. Let me say that again for those in the back. I said most of us are good at telling God about our problems, but the Bible tells us to put the Lord in the remembrance of his promises, not our problems. Isaiah 62, 6 says this, put the Lord in remembrance of his Put the Lord in remembrance of his. All of God's promises are. Come on now. This is something to shout about, church. We should get excited about this. Whew. So what are we supposed to be reminding God of? Promises. Here's a question I want you to ask yourself. Write this down. What would our lives look like? If we stopped reminding God of our problems and started reminding him of his promises. Write that down. I said, what would our lives look like if we stopped reminding God of our problems and we started reminding him of his promises? You know what the Lord told us to do in Isaiah? We just read it. Put the Lord in remembrance of his Put the Lord in easy, remember of his, man, you, you guys are quiet this morning. How many know it's easy, I said it's easy to tell God about our problems. But you know what I found out? It's just as easy to remind him of his promises. When we're griping and complaining, we can turn that around and we can begin to tell God, but this is what your word Says, But here's the problem. We have become so accustomed to confessing our problems instead of his promises. If you're going to see your situation change, then you need to begin to confess his promises, not your problems. Let me say that again. I said if you're going to see your situation change, you need to begin to confess his promises and not your problems. When you're going through a hard time, find a promise in God's word concerning your situation and begin to declare that over your life. Let me give you an example. Maybe you're struggling financially this morning and you've been telling God, man, it's been going through this hard time financially. Maybe you should be reminding God of this instead of that. Philippians 4.19 says this, and my God, say my God, will supply. Let me ask you a question. Which one's easier to say, man, I'm struggling financially? Or to say, God, you'll supply all my needs. Huh? So 
Some of you may grew up in a charismatic church like me. And I want you to know I'm not talking about the name it and claim it movement. Some of you may not even know what that is, but that's okay. Or I'm not talking about positive thinking or anything like that. I'm learning that you and I need to learn to confess his promises over our life. Write this down. This is for you name and claim it people who grew up in the 90s. You other people, you can Google it. God is not obligated to bring to pass what you say. But he is obligated to bring to pass what he says. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on now. I'll just say whatever I want. If I say it enough, you know, and then you got all twist God's arm like he's a genie, rub up the genie of the Bible. No, 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 no. That's a misunderstanding of who God is. See, God's not obligated to bring past your word. God's obligated to bring to pass his words. And so if you want to see your situation change, start confessing his word over your life. Hebrews 10.23 says this, we can trust God to do what he? We can trust God to do what he? Just as our children take us at our word, we are going to have to learn to start taking our heavenly father at his word. Let me say that again. Just as our children take us at our word, we are going to have to learn to start taking our Heavenly Father at his word. When I tell Jack and Ava we're going to do something, you know what I found out? They don't start making excuses to why we won't be able to do it. Let me stop for a second and let you think about what I just said. I said when I promise my children something, they don't begin to make excuses of why it can't happen. They just know daddy told them something, and so therefore it should take place. Oh, my goodness. If you, being evil, you know what the, you know what the Bible says? Know how to give good gifts. It won't your heavenly father, oh, who is so good, won't he give you what you're asking him for? Huh? Hey, Jax, we're going to get you water slide. Daddy, you don't own a truck. But Jax, I'm going to get you one. No, Dad, here's a good one for you. We already had one, and it broke before. How many of you have done that to your Heavenly Father? I tried that before, and it didn't work. Huh? Jack, don't make excuses. He just wants to know where their water slide is. Huh? What can we learn from our kids? Huh? When you tell them something, they believe that it's true. When your heavenly father promises you something, you can believe that it's true. It may not come the way you thought it would come. It may not come when you thought it would come. But you know what? It will come. Sarah orders everything on Amazon nowadays. Can anybody say amen? How many orders Amazon? She'll go in there and I'll ask her about something. Hey, where is this? And I realize a lot of times, you know what she'll tell me? It's scheduled and it's still on time. But you know what that means? It's not on my front porch yet. It just means it's on its way. And you know what? I never question whether Amazon is going to deliver it to my porch when she tells me it's on time or not. Huh? If I will believe about a guy in a little blue truck, then how many know I can believe in my Heavenly Father? Huh? Come on. Some of you need to hear this this morning. It is scheduled and it is on time. I'm not, I, I found out Jesus is a lot like the Cox worker. We'll be there somewhere between 12 and 12 a.m. Huh? Well, can't you tell me when you're going to be there? No. I can just tell you I'm going to be there. And see, here's the thing. You will take off work. You will miss something trusting that the Cox guy said he'll be there between 1 and 7. Oh, come on, somebody. If you'll trust somebody from India to tell you you'll be there from 1 to 7, then surely 
you can trust your heavenly father this morning. Huh? But God, I don't see it yet. Just pull out your phone. Pull out that login information. It's a, JC beat me to it. That's okay. I'm glad you're talking to me this morning. You know what it says? It's on its way. Some of you have been holding on. Some of you have been believing God. And God sent me here to tell you this morning this, this. It's on its way. Somebody touch both neighbors and say, it's on its way. I'm not sure exactly when it's going to be delivered, but I know this. It's on its way. Can somebody shout amen this morning? All of his promises are yes and amen. Whew. If I was you guys, I'd be standing up. I don't even know how you're sitting down. Mm. Listen to me. When we are confessing God's word over our lives, it doesn't mean that we're denying the problems that we're facing. Let me say that again for you charismatic people. When we're confessing God's word over our lives, it doesn't mean that we're denying the problems that we are facing. Listen, we are just choosing to believe that God's promises are greater than any problems that you will face. Huh? I'm not denying it. Let me prove it to you scripturally. I'm not just making this stuff up. Romans 4.18 says this. Verse 18 says, against all hope. Has anybody found yourself there before? There's no reason to hope. Maybe you're going through a situation right now and you're like, man, you're just, there's no hope. Against all hope, I wanted you to know something this morning. When all hell is breaking loose in your life, you can still have hope. Against all hope, the Bible says Abraham still had hope. And he believed and so became the father of many nations. Just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring breathe. Verse 19, look at this. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact. Turn to both your neighbors and say, face the fact. Listen to me, just because you face the facts doesn't mean you're denying your problems. The Bible says that you can face your facts without weakening in your faith. Woo! I wish you all had hankies this morning. Because Abraham apparently didn't even grow weary in his faith when he faced the facts that what? His body was good as dead since he was about 100 years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Turn to both of you, David, and say, yet. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding what? The promises of God. But was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. Some of you need to learn to give glory to God. Oh, I'll just wait until I see what I'm believing for before I give glory to God. No, 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 no. Then you got it all messed up. You need to begin to learn to praise God before you start seeing what you're believing. God, I thank you. Why would I thank God before I see it? Because I know his promises are yes and amen. And so while I'm waiting, God, I will praise you. Some of you get so excited because you know what's on the other side of that Amazon package. I'm here to tell you what God has for you has nothing compared to the Amazon people. And if you can get excited about a little box showing up, then my God, you can get excited about a promise from your heavenly Father. Begin to give him praise. Begin to give him praise. Mm. Where are we at? I don't even know where we are. He gave the promise to God, but he was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. Verse 21, look at this. Being fully persuaded, tell your neighbor, say, get persuaded, that God has the power to do what he, what's this series about? Huh? Some of you, it's okay to face the facts. Right now, maybe your financial situation isn't looking good. We don't deny that. That's not faith. That's denial. And there's a big difference. See, I can have faith and still face my facts. 
Maybe your financial situation isn't looking good. Maybe you have a health concern this morning. Maybe, I don't know what it is, but how many know it's okay to face your facts, but you can still trust God. The Bible says that Abraham grew strong in his faith, yet he faced a fact. He said, man, I'm 100 years old. My wife is just as old as I am. There is no way in the natural that this could take place, yet I will praise him because he promised me something, and I know if he promised me something, I know he's good to fulfill it. Can somebody say amen to that? How many you know that's the God that we serve this day, church? Mm. Abraham wasn't denying the facts that him and Sarah were too old to have kids. He was just persuaded that God had the power to do what he had promised. Let me say that again. He was persuaded that God could do the power he had promised. And how many know that's the place that God wants you and I to get in our faith this morning? That we are trusting more in his promises than we are the problems that we're facing. Tell your neighbor, say, trust his promises. Not your problems. It's easy, right? It's easier said than done sometimes. But how many know it's possible? I told Jack Zaba, you could have a blow up. They took me my word. God told Abraham he was going to have children. Abraham took him at his word. God wants you and I to get a place in our faith that we can look at the facts without weakening it at our faith because we have become fully persuaded that God has the power to do what he has promised. Can somebody shout amen to that? Tell your neighbor, say, become fully persuaded. Now listen to me. I want to be clear on this point. I'm not trying to get you to deny the facts that you're facing. I'll say it again. That's not faith. Listen to me. True faith is realizing that God's promises are greater than the facts that you're facing. Let me say that again. I said true faith is knowing that God's promises are greater than the facts that you're facing. Write this down. I need you to get this. I need you to get this. Come on. God's promises are greater than the facts you're facing. God's promises are greater than the facts that you're facing. You said if I would raise my children up in church and I would teach them and go in a certain way, God, they will not depart from it. I mean, that's a promise of God. I don't know where your children are this morning, but you know what? Continue to remind God of his word. In the natural, your children may be going buck wild. But you know what? I'm not looking at my problems. I'm going to change my mind and I'm going to start looking, I'm going to change my perspective and I'm going to start looking at God's promises. Because I did what you told me to do, God. I raised my child up in church. And so therefore, I can continue to stand that, you know what? They will serve the Lord. And that pain in my back. We're not talking about your children anymore. <laughs> that pain. Isn't that so easy to say? That pain. There it is. Every morning when I wake up, I got that pain. You know what? That's okay. You can say, you know what, every morning I wake up, that pain, honey, just is in my back. But God's word says, by his stripes I've been made whole. See, I'm not going to deny my facts. I'm just going to start adding the promises to my facts. Huh? That pain is, man, I wake up in there. But you know what, God, you said that you went to the cross for me. And by your stripes I have been made whole. And so, therefore, I receive it by the name of Jesus Christ. And listen to me, it's scheduled and it's on time. Worship team, you can join me back up on stage. I'm going to begin my first close. We'll be serving lunch in a second. I 
I just want to share a last scripture with you and a couple last thoughts. And then we'll go right back into worship and we're going to have a time of prayer this morning. One of our core values at Reese Church is this. We believe in prayer. And listen to me, that's why we do this every Sunday at the end of service, because we believe in the power of prayer. I don't know what you're going through this morning, but the Bible says if somebody will agree with you and they pray the prayer of faith, that your situation can change. So that's why we offer prayer at the end of service every Sunday, because we believe that we, God wants to see your situation change. So in just a few moments, the staff will come up, and I want to invite you as we go back into worship, come down. Let us pray with you, but probably more importantly, let us pray for you. We would love to do that. Can somebody say amen? Luke 137 says this. Not one promise from God is empty of its power. Nothing is impossible with God. Now see, we've always probably quoted that scripture before. Nothing is impossible with God, right? How many ever said that before? How many ever heard that before? Nothing is impossible with God. But did they give you the context of it? It's talking about the promises of God. It says, not one promise from God is empty of its power. Period. Nothing is impossible with God. Stand to your feet this morning. I'm not sure what you're facing right now. But I want you to know this. Not one promise from God is empty of its power. And with God, all things are possible. I want to encourage you this week to begin to remind yourself of the promises of God. As you begin to go out throughout your week, catch yourself. Make a note of how many times that you're talking about your problems instead of your promises. Just make a little note. Pull out your phone, you all carry phones, you have note sections. And just this week, just for fun, make a mental note, but oh, one, when you start thinking about your problems, oh, there's two, start three, and you'll see how many times you start focusing on your problems instead of your promises. And then you'll begin to wonder why your situation needs to begin to change, and then you know what you do? Now change your perspective and start focusing on his promises instead of your problems. You know what that's going to require you to do? I don't have my Bible this morning, but it's going to cause you to get into the Word of God. You don't know His promises unless you open the Word. Why does the enemy fight you and I every day? Day from opening the Word of God because He knows the power. The power is in His Word. And if He can keep you from knowing His promises, then He can keep you right where you are. my opinion, when Paul talks about it's a fight of faith, you know what the fight is? For you to understand what really belongs to you as a child of God. Open his word this week, church. Listen, listen to me. Just by, we'll do this real quickly. Anybody have any idea how many promises are found in God's word this morning? Nobody Google. Anybody, just guess. Just throw it out. Come on, somebody just, a thousand, I heard a thousand. 365, I heard that. There's a promise for every day. 700. Now I feel like I'm Bob Barker. Over 3,500 promises are in the Word of God. Over 3,500 promises from your Heavenly Father. Here's what I hear your Heavenly Father saying this morning. You can have that water slide. You can have it. You can have the water slide. You can have that water slide. 
just get into his promises. We close your eyes this morning, staff, make your way down to the front. We're going to go right back into worship and have a time of prayer. And I want to encourage you, if you need prayer for absolutely anything, I want to ask you just to step out as we begin to pray, as we begin to worship, excuse me, and let the staff begin to pray with you and pray for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. Thank you for watching the Reach Church YouTube channel. Stay connected with us on Facebook and Instagram. Hit the subscribe button and share this video with a friend. You can also support the ministry by visiting reachchurch.us give to help us continue reaching and equipping people. Thanks again for watching and God bless.